Good morning. I want to once again this day return to Hebrews 12, uh, the first couple of verses. Let me remind you what those are. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And I want us to think this day about that clause that tells us to lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. I mentioned yesterday that when I am running a race, I have a little hydration backpack that I take with me. And it has water in there and some of the other things that I need for the race in there, nutrition and that kind of thing. But one of the things that I learned was to only put enough water that I think I'm actually going to drink in there. Uh, because every extra drop of water is that much more weight that I have to carry with me around the course. And my um, uh, pack will hold, I think, a couple of liters of water. And that's just way too much weight to be trying to run around a course. And so I usually have a liter or less of water in there. The author of Hebrews is saying we don't need weight to weigh us down, particularly not the weight of sin to weigh us down. And, uh, if, and when we do, we just can't run the race the way that we're supposed to. We can't accomplish what we want to accomplish. The window behind me is a picture of the prodigal son coming back to his father. There's a wonderful, I think, illustration in this. So often when we look at other people, I think one of the weights that, that, that lays on to us and the sin that clings so tight is we judge them. If they aren't like us, if we don't like what they're doing, if we don't like their uh, beliefs or their political ideology or whatever, we can just feel like we're free to savage them. And we feel like we're free to, to just call them idiots, uh, whether to their face or not, and say all manner of horrible things about them. And yet that is sin that has the opportunity or the chance of putting a distance between them and God. Think about this picture back there. The prodigal son's father does not condone the things that his son did. His son essentially said, I wish that you were dead. His son said, I want every um, penny that I'm supposed to get for inheritance, and I want it now so that I can go off and do what I want to. And the father knows that it's going to end in tragedy, but he lets the son do that instead. And when the son comes to his senses, he comes back to his father. His father doesn't lecture him on what he has done. Instead, he accepts him. This is really key. One of the ways I think that we can lay aside the sin of judgmentalism is recognize that we can accept other people without condoning their behavior, without accepting or condoning their beliefs, we still can accept them. And if we love them the way that the prodigal son's father loved him, we will see the transformation. I'm absolutely convinced it's because of the way the father treated the son that the son was able, I am just positive, to go on and have a wonderful and productive life. And had Jesus uh, spun that story out a little further, I think we would have found that uh, to be the case. And that uh, younger son probably became a wonderful, wonderful father in his day as well because of the example of his father. So let us keep our eyes looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, our heavenly father, and mimicking him, laying aside anything that might slow us down, any weight of sin that might be on us, that we might be the people that God is calling us to be. And we can do that because each and every day, each and every moment of each and every day, God is with us.